Hello, welcome back to our SuperCloud 22 event. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE with my co-host Dave Vellante, extracting the signal from the noise. We're proud to have two uh, amazing CUBE alumni here. We got uh, Sanjay Poonin, who's now the CEO of Cohesity, and Mo Aaron, who's the CTO, co-founder, also former CEO, CUBE alumni. The father of Hyper Converged. Welcome back to theCUBE. I endorse Super that, Cloud. he absolutely is the father. Great to see you guys. Thank yeah. you. Thanks Thank for you coming, coming on. In. And perfect timing, the new job, taking over that the helm from Moet at Cohesity. Big news, but part of SuperCloud, we want to dig into it. Thanks for coming on. Thank sure. you for having us here. Uh, so first of all, we get into Super, before we get into SuperCloud, I want to just get the thoughts on the move. Sanjay, we've been following your career since 2010. You've been a CUBE alumni from that point. We followed that, your career. Why Cohesity, why now? Yeah, um, John, David, thank you first of all for having us here, and it's great to be at your event. Um, you know, when I uh, left VMware last year, I took some time off, just really primarily, I hadn't had a sabbatical in probably 18 years. I joined two boards, Philips and Sneak, and then you know, started just to invest and help entrepreneurs. Uh, most of them were, you know, Indian Americans like me who were had great tech, uh, were looking for the kind of go-to-market connections. It was just a wonderful year to just de to unwind a bit. Uh, and along the, the way came CEO calls, and I'd ask myself the question, is the tech the best in the industry? Uh, could you see value creation that was signi significant? And uh, you know, three, four months ago, Mohit and uh, Carl Eschenbach and a few of the board members of Cohesity called me and walked me through Mohit's decision, which he'll talk about in a second. And uh, we spent the last few months getting to know him, and he's everything you described. He's not just the father of Hyperconverge. Yeah. He, he wrote the Google file system, wicked smart, built a tech platform better than that second done. But we had to really kind of walk through the chemistry between us, which we did in long walks and in you know, discreet places so that people yeah. wouldn't find us in a <laughs> Starbucks and start gossiping. <laughs> so why uh, Sanjay? There you go. <laughs> Actually, uh, I should say it's a combination of two different decisions. The first one was to, uh, for me, to um, take a different role and I've run the company as a CEO for, for nine years. And you know, as a, as a technologist, um, I always like you know, going deep into technology. The, at the same time, the CEO duties require a lot of breadth. Right? You're talking to customers, you're talking to partners, you're doing so much. And with the way we've been growing, the, with, you know, we've been fortunate, um, it was becoming hard to balance both. It's really also not fair to the company. Yeah. So I opted to do the depth job you know, be the visionary, be the technologist, and uh, that was the first decision to bring a CEO, a great CEO from outside. And, and I saw and your video on the site, you said it was your decision. Yes, correct. I have to ask you, because this is a real big transition for founders, and you know, I have founderitis, because everyone you know, calls me that, but uh, being the founder uh, of a company, it's always hard to let go. I mean, nine years as CEO, <laughs> it's not like you had, a, you had a great run. So this, was it timing for you? Was it, was it a structural shift? Like at SuperCloud, we're talking about a major shift that's happening right now in the industry. Was it a balance issue? Was it more of you wanted to get back in, in, in the tech? Look, I, I also want to answer, you know, why Sanjay, but, uh, but I'll address your question first. Uh, I always put the company first. What's right for the company? Is it for me to stuck, get uh, stuck to the CEO seat? and try to juggle this uh, depth and breadth simultaneously. I mean, I can stroke my ego a little bit there, but it's not good for the company. What's best for the company, you know, I'm a technologist. How about I oversee the technology part in partnership with so many great people I have in the company, and I bring someone kick ass to be the CEO. And so then that was the second decision, why Sanjay? I mean, Sanjay, you know, is a very well-known figure. He's managed billions of dollars of business in VMware, you know, been there, done that, um, has, you know, some of the biggest, you know, people in the industry on his speed dial. Um, you know, we were really fortunate to have someone like that come in and uh, accept the role of the CEO of Cohesity. I think we can take the company to new heights, and I'm looking forward to my partnership with, with Sanjay on this. It's, it's, we uh, we it's, called it the Splash Brothers in the, <laughs> in the uh, vernacular. It doesn't matter who gets the ball, whether it's Steph or Clay, we shoot. And I think if you look at some of the great partnerships, whether it was Gates, Bomber, there are plenty of history of this where a founder and a, someone who is, it, it has to be complementary skills. If I was a technologist myself and wanted to code, we'd clash. Yeah. But I think this is really a match made in heaven because he, he can, I want him to keep innovating and building the best platform for today and the future. And our customers, one customer told me, this is the best tech they've seen since VMware 20 years ago. 
AWS 10 years ago and most recently, this was a global 100 big customer. So uh, I feel like this combination, now we have to show that it works. It's, you know, it's been three, four months of my getting to know him. You know, I'm day eight on the job, but I'm loving it. Well, it's a Slootman model too, a more modern example. Right. You saw he did it with Fred Luddy at ServiceNow. Yeah. And, and of course, at, uh, at Snowflake, yeah. and in his book, you read his book, I don't know if you've read his amp book. Amp it up. But, but amp it up. Yeah. And he says, I always, you'll love this, give great deference to the founder. Always show great respect, right? And for good reason, so. In yeah. fact, I mean, you can talk to him. You've actually met I, to I Frank. I actually, you know, a, a month or so back, uh, I actually had dinner with him mm. in his ranch in Montana. And I posed a question. There was a number of CEOs that went there. Um, and I pose him the question, so Frank, uh, you know, many of us, we grow being depth guys, you know, and eventually when we take on the helm of a CEO, we have to do breadth. How do you do it? And he's like, well, Mohit, let me tell you, I was never a depth guy. <laughs> I'm a breadth guy. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that, that's my answer. Yeah. yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, I want one th short story. So the day I got the job, I, I got a text from Frank and I said, what's your advice the first time CEO? Three words, amp it up. Yeah, but up, right, yeah. <laughs> and so you're always on brand, man. <laughs> so you're an amazing operator. You've proven that time and time again at SAP, VMware, et cetera. Do you feel like now you, you're going to do both of those skills? You got the board and you got the operations? Because you, you know, look at Sloopman, he's got Scarpelli. Wherever he goes, he brings Scarpelli with him as sort of the operator. How, how, do you, how are you thinking about I that? I mean, it's early days, but you're to, much to smaller, me, right? yeah, but it's so. small. I mean, I've, you know, when I was, you know, it was 35,000 people at VMware, 80, 90,000 people at SAP. A really good run, the SAP run was 10 to 20 billion. Innovative products, especially in analytics and VMware, uh, six to 12 end user computing cloud. So I learned a lot. Uh, I think the company, you know, being about 2,000 employees plus, um, not today or tomorrow, but over the course of next year, I can meet everybody, right? Mm -hmm. So first off, the executive team, 10 of us, we're, we're building more and more cohesiveness, if I could use that word, between us, which is great. Uh, the next, you know, layers of VPs and every manager, I think that's possible. So I, I'm a people person and a customer person. So I think when you take that sort of extroverted uh, mindset, um, we'll bring energy to the workforce to, to retain the best and then recruit the best. And you know, even just the week we, we were announced, uh, that this announcement happened, our website traffic went through the roof, the highest it's ever been, lots of resumes coming in. So, and then lots of customer engagement. So I think we'll take this, but I, I feel very good about the possibilities because, see for me, I didn't want to walk into the company, uh, to a company where the technology risk was high, okay? I feel like that I can go to bed at night and the technology risk is low. This guy's going to run a yeah. machine at the current and the future, and I'm hearing that from customers. Now, what I got to do is get the, the amp it up part on the go-to-market. I know a little thing yeah. or two yeah. about that. You got that down. I think the partnership is really key here. And again, nine years as CEO, and then Sanjay points to our super cloud trend that we've been looking at, which is, there's another wave happening. There's a structural change in real time happening now. Cloud One was done. We saw that transition, AWS, cloud native. Now cloud native with an kind of an operating system kind of vibe going on with on-premise, hybrid, edge, people say multi-cloud, but we're looking at this as an opportunity for companies like Cohesity to go to the next level. So I got to ask you guys, what do you see as structural change right now in the industry that's disruptive? People are using cloud and scale and data to refactor their business models, change modern applications with cloud native. How are you guys looking at this next structural change that's happening right now. Yeah, I'll take that. So, so I'll start by saying that number one, data is the new oil. And number two, data is exploding, right? Every year, data just grows like crazy. Managing data is becoming harder and harder. You mentioned some of those, right? There's so many cloud options available, cloud one, different vendors have different clouds. There is still on-prem, there's uh, edge infrastructure. And the number one problem that happens is our data is getting fragmented all over the place and managing so many fragments of data is getting harder and harder. Even within a cloud or within on-prem or within edge, data is fragmented, right? Number two, um, I think the hackers out there have realized that uh, you know, to make money, it's no longer necessary to rob banks. They can actually see, steal the data. So ransomware attacks on the rise. It's become a boardroom level discussion. They say there's a ransomware attack happening every 11 seconds or so, right? So protecting your data has become very important. Security, data security has become very important. Compliance is important, right? Um, so people are looking for data management solutions, the next gen data management platform that can really provide all this stuff. And that's what Cohesity is about. What's the difference between data management and backup? Explain that. Backup is just an entry point. That's one use case. I want to draw an analogy. 
Um, let's draw an analogy to my former company, Google. Right? Uh, Google started by doing Google search, but is Google really just a search engine? They've built a platform that can do multiple things. You know, they might have started with search, but then they went on to roll out Google Maps and Gmail and YouTube and so many other things on that platform. So similarly, um, backups might be just the first use case, but it's really about that platform on which you can do more uh, with the data. That's next-gen data management. But, but you, am I correct? You don't consider yourself a security company. One of your competitors is actually pivoting and, and positioning themselves as a security company. I've always felt like data management, backup and recovery, data protection is an adjacency to security, but those two worlds are coming together. How do you see it? Yeah, the way I see it is that um, security is part of data management. Um, you start maybe by backing with data, but then you secure it, and then you do more with that data. If you're only doing security, then you're just securing the data. You're, you you got to do more with the data. So data management is much bigger. So it's, a, it's a security. security is a subset of data. Yeah, I mean, so there you I, go, we, big we, TAM, Sanjay. Well, well I mean, I and I I I I'd, I'd agree. And I, actually, we don't get into that debate. You know, um, I told the company, listen, we'll figure that out, because who cares about the positioning? At the bottom of my email, I say we are a data management and data security company. Okay. Now, what's the best word that describes three nouns? Which I think we're going to do: management security and analytics, okay? Uh, he showed me a beautiful diagram, went to his home in the course of one of these, you know, discrete conversations. And this was, I mean, he's done this before, many of you watch on YouTube. He showed me a picture of an ice, a big iceberg. And he said, listen, you know, if you look at companies like Snowflake and Databricks, they're doing the management security and mostly analytics of data that's the top of the iceberg, the stuff you see. But a lot of the stuff that's get backed up the archive is the bottom of the iceberg that you don't see. And you try to, if you try to ask a question on age data, the IT guy will say, get a ticket, I'll come back with three days, I'll unarchive the data, rehydrate it, and then you'll put it into a database and you can uh, think. Now imagine that you could do live searches, analytics on, on age data. That's analytics. So I think the management, the security, the analytics of, you know, if you want to call it secondary data or backed up data or data that's not hot and live, warm, colder, is a huge opportunity. Now, what do you want to call one phrase that describes all of it? Do you call Super it management, cloud. security? Okay, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I view it as saying, listen, let's build a platform. Some people call Google a search company. People, some people call Google an information company. And we just have to go and pursue every CIO and every CISO that has a management and a security and due course analytics problem. And that's what we're doing. And when I talk to the, you know, I didn't talk to all the 3,000 customers, but the biggest customers and I was doing diligence, they're like, this thing has got enormous potential, okay? And we just have to now go focus, get every Fortune 1000 company to pick us. Yeah. Because this problem, even the first use case you talk about backup, is a little bit like, you know, razor blades and soap. You needed, you needed it 30 years ago, and you'll need it for 30 years. It's just that the tools that were built in the last generation that were yeah. companies formed in the 1990s, one of them I worked for uh, years ago, our aids are not built for the cloud. So I think this is a tremendous opportunity where many of those, those, those nouns, management, security, analytics, will become part of what we do. And we'll come up with the right phrase for what the company is in due course. Sanjay, so, uh, Moet and Sanjay, so given that, given that this Google transition, I like that example, search was a data problem. They got sequenced to a broader market opportunity. What SuperCloud we're trying to tease out is, what is that changeover from a data standpoint? Because now the operating environment's changed. It's become more complex and the enterprises are savvy, developers are savvy now. They want, they want SaaS solutions, they want freemium and expanding, they're going to drive the operations agenda with DevOps. So what is the complexity that needs to be abstracted away? How do you see that mode? Because this is what people are talking about. They're saying security is built in, driven by developers. Developers are driving operations behavior. So what is the shift? Where do you guys see this new yeah. expansive for Cohesity? How do you fit into SuperCloud? So let me build up from that entry point, maybe right. backups to what you're saying is the super cloud, right? Let me draw that journey. So uh, let's say the legacy players are just doing backups. How, how sad is it that you have one silo sitting there just for peace of mind as an insurance policy and you do nothing with the data. If you have to do something with the data, you have to build another silo, you have to build another copy, you have to manage it separately, right? So clearly that's a little bit brain damage, right? So okay, so now you take a little bit of uh, you know newer vendors who may take that backup platform and do a little bit more with that. Maybe they provide security. But your problem still remains. Uh, how do you do more with the data? How do you do some analytics like he's saying, right? How do you do test and development on that? How do you migrate the data to the cloud? How do you manage the data at scale? 
how do you uh, provide a unified experience across, across multiple clouds, which you're calling the super cloud. That's where Cohesity goes. So what we do, we provide a platform, right? Uh, we have tentacles in on-prem in each of the clouds. And on top of that, it looks like one platform that you manage. We have a single control plane, uh, a UI if you may, a single pane of glass if, uh, if you may, that our customers can use to manage all of it. And now it looks, starts looking like one platform. You mentioned Google. Do you, when you go to uh, you know, kind of Google search or a URL, do you really care what happens behind the scenes? I mean, behind the scenes, Google's built a platform that spans the whole world. No, but it's interesting what's right. behind the scenes. It's a beautiful <laughs> now. And I would say, listen, one of the things to pull on, Dave, on the security part, I saw a lot of vendors this day in this space whitewashing a security message on top of backup. Okay? And CISOs see through that. Uh, they'll offer warranties and guarantees or whatever have you of X million dollars with a lot of caveats, which we'll never pay it because it's like escape clause here, we won't pay it. Yeah. And, and what people really want is a scalable solution that works. And you know, we can match every warranty, that's easy. And what I heard was this was the most scalable solution at scale. And that's why you have to approach this with a Google type mindset. I love the fact that every time, you listen to Sundar Pichai, what, what's, what I like about him, the most common word to use is scale. We do things at scale. So I found that him and Apoorv and some of the early Google people who come into the company had thought about scale. And, and even me, it's like day eight, I found even the non-tech pieces of it, the processes that you know, these guys are built for simple things, in some cases were better than some of the things I saw at bigger companies that I've been used to. So we just have to continue you know, uh, building a scale platform in the enterprise and then our cloud product is going to be the simple solution for the masses. And my view of the world is there's 5,000 big companies and 5 million small companies. Mm -hmm. We'll push the 5 million small companies to the cloud. Okay? Amazon's an investor in the company. AWS is a big partner. We'll talk about that, I'm sure, knowing John's interest in that area. But that's a cloud play. And that's going to go to the cloud really fast. And well, if you, you not build a cloud- You're in the marketplace. You're in the marketplace. I mean, maybe talk about the history of the Amazon relationship, yeah. the investing and all that. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, so uh, in uh, two years back, um, late 2020, we, uh, you know, in collaboration with AWS, uh, who also, by the way, is an investor now in, in Cohesity, we uh, rolled out what we call data management as a service. It's our SaaS service, where we run our software in the cloud, and literally all customers have to do is just go there and sign on, right? They don't have to manage any infrastructure and stuff. What's, what's nice is they can then combine that with, uh, you know, software that they might have bought from Cohesity, and it still looks like one platform. So what I'm trying to say is that they get a choice of the, of the way they want to consume our software. They can consume it as a SaaS service in the cloud. They can buy our software, manage it themselves, offload it to a partner, on premises or what have you, but it still looks like that one platform, what you're calling a super yeah, and, and developers are saying they want the bag of Legos to compose their solutions. That's the nirvana. They want to get there. So that, that's it right. has to look the same. Well, well, is it what we're calling a super cloud? Can we, can we test that for a second? So data management as a service could span AWS and on-prem with the identical experience. So I guess I would call that a super cloud. Um, I presume it's not going to, through AWS, span multiple clouds, um, but but why, why not? Well, well interesting, because we had this I mean, I, earlier. I, I, I'm, so, okay, so we could in the future, it doesn't today. Well, fair, David, fair let me enough. kind of pause for a second. Everything that we do there, if we do it, will be customer driven. So there might be some customers, well, I'll give you one, Walmart that may want to store the data in a non-AWS cloud just because they're competitors. Right. So, but the control plane could still be in, in, in the way we built it, but the data might be stored somewhere else. What about, yeah. what about an on-prem customer who says, hey, I, I like Cohesity, I've now got multiple clouds. I want the identical experience across clouds. Yeah. Okay, so, so can you do that today? How do you do that today? Can we talk about that? Yeah, so basically think roughly about the split between the data plane and the control plane. The data plane is, you know, our cohesity clusters that could be sitting on premises, that could be sitting in multiple data centers, or you can run an instance of that cluster in the cloud, whichever cloud you choose, right? That's what he was referring to as the data plane. So collectively, all these clusters form the data plane, right? They store the data but it can all be managed using the control plane. So you still get that single image, the single experience across all clouds. And by the way, the, the, um, the, the cloud vendors actually benefit because here is a customer, he mentioned a customer that may not want to go to AWS, but when they uh, get the data plane on a different cloud, yeah. whether it's Azure, whether it's um, the Google cloud, 
they then get data management services. Maybe they're able to replicate the data over to AWS. So AWS also gains. And, and, right? and your deployment model is you instantiate the Cohesity stack on each of the regions and clouds, is that correct? And you're building essentially a It all happens behind the scenes, that's right. Uh, you know, just like yeah. Google probably has their tentacles all over the world we will instantiate and then make it all look like one platform. I mean, you should really think it's like a human body, right? The control plane is the head, okay? Yeah. And that controls everything. The data plane is large because it's a lot of the data. Right. It's the, the rest of the body. That data plane could be wherever you want it to be. Traditionally, in the part, the old days was tape. Then you got disk. Now you got multiple clouds. So that's the way we think about it. And there on that piece of it, we'll be neutral, right? We should be multi-cloud to the data plane being every single place because it's customer demand. Where do you want your stored data? Air-gapped on-prem, no problem, we'll work with Dell. Okay, you want to be um, um, in a particular cloud, AWS, we'll work then, optimize with S3 and Glacier. So this is where I think the, the, the path to a multi-cloud or super cloud is to be customer-driven, but the control plane sits in Amazon. So we're blessed to have a, a number of you know, technical geniuses in here. So earlier we were speaking to Benoit Dajaville, and what they do is different. They don't instantiate on individual you know, regions. What they do is have a single global. Is there a, is there an advantage of doing it the way that Cohesity does it in terms of simplicity, or how do you see that? Is that a future direction for you from a technology standpoint? What are the trade-offs there? So you want to be where the data is. Mm -hmm. uh, when you said single global, I take it that they run somewhere and the data has to go there. Uh, and in this day Correct. and age, Correct, when he said the, that. He said you got to move that. In this day and age. Query that's you know, across regions. Look, in this day and age, with the way the data is growing the way it is, mm -hmm. it's hard to move around the data. Mm -hmm. It's much easier to move around the computation and in these instances or what have you. So let the data be where it is and you manage it right there. So that's the advantage of instantiating in multiple regions is you don't and, have to move the data. So we, we have the philosophy, we call it, let's bring the, the computation to the data rather than the yeah. data to the and, computation. And the same security model, same governance model, same, how, right. do, you, how do you federate that? Yeah, that, so that. it's all based on policies. You know, this overarching platform controlled by the, by the control plane, you just, our customers just put in the policies and then the underlying nuts and bolts it, take care of it. You know, it's, it's when I first heard and started, I started watching some of his old videos, it's really like hyperconverged brought to secondary storage. In fact, he said, oh yeah, that's great, you got it because I first called this idea Hyperconverged secondary storage. Because <laughs> the idea of him inventing hyperconverged was bringing compute to storage. It had never been done. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had the kind of big VC yeah. stuff, but these guys were the first to bring that hyperconverged at, at Nutanix. So I think this is that same idea of bringing compute to storage, but now applied not to the warm data, but to the rest of the data, including a lot of the What about data. developers? What, uh, what's, what's your relationship with developers? Maybe talk uh, about the marketplace and everything you're doing. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 yeah. And, and, I'm, and I'm curious as to, do you have a PaaS layer, what we call a super PaaS layer, to create an identical developer experience across your super cloud, I'm going to yeah. use my term. So we want our customers not just to benefit from the software that we write. We also want them to benefit from you know, um, software that's written by developers, by third party people, and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. So we also support a marketplace on the Cohesity platform where you can download apps from third party developers and run them on this platform. There's a a number of successful apps. There's one, you know, look, uh, like I said, our entry point might be backups, but even when backups, we don't do everything. Though for instance, we don't backup mainframes. Um, there is a, a company we partner with, you know, and their software can run in our marketplace, and it's actually used by many, many of our financial customers. Mm -hmm. So our customers don't get just get the benefit of uh, what we build, but they also get the benefit of what third parties build. Another analogy I like to draw, you can tell I'm fond of analogies. I drew an analogy to hyperscalers like Google. Yeah. The second analogy I like to draw is that to a simple smartphone. Right, a smartphone starts off by being a great phone, but beyond that, it's also a GPS player, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a music player, it's a camera, it's yeah. a flashlight, and it also has a marketplace from where you can download apps and extend the power of that platform. Is that a, can we think of that as a PaaS layer or no? Is it really not? You can, okay. you can say Is it purpose like built for what you're, the problem that you're trying to solve? So we, we just build APIs, yep. right? We have an SDK that developers can use and uh, through those APIs, they get to leverage the underlying services that exist on the platform and now developers can use that to take advantage of all that stuff. And it was that was a key factor for me too because I when I you know I've studied all the six seven players that are sort of so called leaders nobody had a developer ecosystem nobody. Right. The old folks were built for the hardware era mm -hmm. but anyone who were built for the cloud too it didn't have any partners who were building on their platform. So I felt for me listen and that the example of yeah. 
um, you know, Model 9, right? It's the name of the company that All does right. backup. So there's, there's companies that are built on, and there's a number of others. So our goal is to have a big tent, David, to everybody in the ecosystem to partner with us to build on this platform. And, and, and that may take over time, but that's the and, way we're going to build it. And you have a metadata layer too that has the intelligence to... Correct, put, put it's all abstract, that, that's right. So it's a combination of data and metadata. We have lots of metadata that keeps track of where the data is. You know, it allows you to index the, the data. You can do quick searches. You can actually, you know, we're talking about the control plane. From that data control tracing. plane, you can inject a search that will through, search throughout your multi-cloud environment, right? The super cloud that you call it. Um, we have all that, all that goodness. Uh, Sounds like a super cloud, John. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> data tracing involved can trace the data lineage. You, you can trace the data lineage, so yeah. we you know, provide you know, compliance and stuff. So you can. All right, so my final question to wrap up, because first of all, thanks for coming on. I know you're super busy. Sanjay, we know, we know what you're going to do. You're going to amp it up and um, you know, knock all your numbers out, like you always do. But what I'm interested in what you're going to jump into, because now you're going to have the creative license to jump in to the product, yeah. the platform. There has to be the next level in your mind. Can you share your thoughts on where this goes next? Love the control plane, separate out from the data plane. I think that plays well for some. How much time do you have, John? This guy's got, he's got a <laughs> wealth of ideas. Keep going, Mark. Give us the most important thing you're going to focus on that kind of brings the super cloud right, and vision together. Yeah, right away, I'm going to perhaps, uh, I, I can partition into two things. The first one is, um, I like to call it building the, the machine, the system, right? Just to draw an analogy. Look, um, I draw an analogy to the US traffic system. Uh, people from all walks of life, uh, rich, poor, Democrats, Republicans, you know, different states, they all work in the, the traffic system and we drive well, right? It's a system that just works. Um, whereas in some other countries, um, you know, the system doesn't work. <laughs> we know, we know a few of those. It's, it's, it's not <laughs> it kind of works. <laughs> it, it's not about the people. It's the same people who would go from here to those countries and, and not drive well. So it's all about the system. Yeah. So the first thing I, I have my sights on is to um, really strengthen the system that we have in our research and development to make it a machine. I mean, it functions quite well even today, but uh, I want to take it to the next level, right? So that I want to get to a point where uh, innovation just happens in the grassroots, and it's just, just like we- Automation, are, scale, all operating systems. All that just happens systems. without anyone overseeing it. Anyone, there's no single point of bottleneck. I don't have to go take any diving catches, what have you. There are people just working, um, you know, in a decentralized fashion, and innovation just happens. Yeah. The second thing I want to work on, of course, is you know, my heart and soul is in, you know driving the vision, you know, the next level, and that, of course, is part of it. So those are the two things. We heard uh, from all day in our super cloud event that there's a need for an, an operating system. Yeah. Whether that's de facto standard or open. Correct. Do you see a consortium around the corner potentially to bring people together so that? things could work together because there really isn't no, there isn't any standards bodies. Now we have great hyperscale growth. We have on-premise, we've got the super cloud thing happening. And it's, it's kind of like, what is an operating system? Operating system exposes some APIs um, that the applications can then use. And if you think about what we've been trying to do with the marketplace, right? Uh, we've built a huge platform and that platform is exposed through APIs that third party developers can use, right? And even we, when we you know, build more and more services on top, uh, you know, we rolled out DMAS, we rolled out backup as a service and a variety of other things, security as a service, yeah. governance as a service. Um, they're using those APIs. So we are building a distributed operating system of sorts. Well, congratulations on a great journey. Sanjay, congratulations on taking Thank the helm. You, you got ball control now. You're going to be calling the ball at Cohesity, as they say. It's, it's a team. It's a, you know, I think I like that African uh, phrase. If you want to go fast, you go alone. If you want to go far, you go together. So I've always operated with yeah. the best team. I'm so fortunate. This is yeah. to me like a dream come true because I always thought I wanted to work with a technologist that frees me up to do what I like. I mean, I started as an engineer, but that's not what I am today. Right. Yeah. So I do understand the product tech. And in this category, I think is ripe for yeah. disruption. Yeah. So I feel excited, you know. Uh, um, it's really changing and growing. It. Yeah, no, and it's a, it, it requires innovation with a cloud scale mindset. And uh, you guys have been great friends yeah. through the years. We'll be, we'll be watching you. Know, and I think it's not only, Disruption, it's creation. Yeah. There's a lot of white space that just hasn't Absolutely. been created yet. And, you're going to have to... and you know, the proof is in the pudding. Yeah. We already have five of the biggest um, 10 financial institutions in the US that are customers. 25% yeah. of the Fortune 500 uses us. Two of the biggest five pharmaceutical companies in the world use us. Probably, you know, some of the biggest companies, you know, the cars you have, you know, out there probably are our customers. So it's already happening. I know you got an IPO file confidentially. I know you can't talk numbers, but I can tell by your confidence, <laughs> you're feeling good right now. We are feeling good. <laughs> yeah, one day, one week, one month at a time. I mean, you yeah. just, you know, I like the, 
you know, Jeff Bezos, Andy Jassy expression, which is it's always day one. You know, just because you've had success, even, you know, if, if a, I, and when an IPO makes sense, you just have to stay humble and hungry because you realize, okay, we've had a lot of success in the Fortune 1000, but there's a lot of white space that hasn't picked us as yet. Mm -hmm. So let's go. Yeah. Uh, there's yeah. lots of mid-market accounts. Product that opportunities that. are so, still headroom. So, you know, I do just huge. stay humble and hungry. And uh, if you've got the team and then, you know, I'm really going to be working also in the ecosystem. I think there's a lot of very good partners. So lots of ideas brewing through the head. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming on our Super Cloud event and, and, and also doubling up on the news of the new appointment. And congratulations yeah. on the success so, of theCUBE. Thanks, guys. Coverage Super Cloud 22. I'm Jeffrey Dave Vellante. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more segments after this break.